Hello and welcome. This time to a new video about hydraulics. Okay. This time we are going to talk about coolings, uh, heating, cooling. Yeah? Why do we do this? Well, we said in our video about uh, the liquid yeah? that the liquid is very sensitive to to pressure changes, uh, to pressure changes, to temperature changes. Yeah? Uh, that the liquid is changing its viscosity and we want to keep the viscosity in a certain area yeah, to allow us to have a laminar flow in the tubes and also to, to have a, a lubrication film which is stable. Okay? So these are the goals. So we need to keep the temperature in a certain range yeah, then the viscosity of the fluid is also good yeah, for our purpose. What does it mean? What does it mean? Well, a certain usually, usually the maximum oil temperatures for standard hydraulic oil are around 50-60 degrees. This should not be exceeded because then it's simply getting too liquid. Yeah. Uh, also the ceilings and so on. The ceilings are very sensitive to, to, to overheating, it's called, yeah? Because they're simply not designed for this. We said, okay, one task of the tank is to let the oil cool down. However, in some cases, especially in mobile hydraulics, the tank sizes are not big enough or that the, the time the oil stays inside the tank is simply not long enough to let the oil cool down because there is simply too much action there. Huh? So what to do? Well, the other way around, by the way, is not really an issue. Huh? If it's getting too cold, the oil, yeah, then you just have to start the hydraulic pump, boom, circle the oil a little bit. This will heat up the oil pretty nice. Yeah? So oil heating, uh, this is a rare cases where we really have to, to add a heating to the oil. Yeah? And not very often. Usually it is enough to start the, the pump and wait a little bit. Yeah? However, cooling is often an issue. So the symbol of a cooler usually looks like this. That's it. Huh? This is a cooler. And we said 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. This is okay. Yeah? Maximum. This should be our goal for our oil. Huh? Now, there are coolers which do work by air. Huh? You know such coolers? Huh? I'm pretty sure you know such coolers. At least if you have ever built up a PC or something like this, this is a cooler which is done. This is not, this is cooling a, 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 a processor. Yeah? However, an air cooler pretty much looks the same way. Yeah? There are a lot of ribs and so on, and air can stream through it. Sometimes it's even used, or very often, there is used a ventilator, a fan blowing through those elements, huh? air cooler. Often used, huh? we can reach temperature difference. So one air cooler, we can reach temperature differences of 25 degree huh? maximum. temperature difference yeah? around this. Yeah? If you want to have it more, yeah, we need a water cooler. With water cooling system, we can reach 35 degrees Celsius yeah? maximum. Delta theta. We know water cooling system maybe also from your PC. Yeah? There is a video of me 
building in a water cooling system. I will link it. Yeah. So this is water cooling. Yeah. And if this is simply not enough, yeah, if there is so much energy involved, yeah, then we need a special also drop the pen, yeah. Then we need a special cooling equipment yeah, with a heat pump inside. Yeah. So heat pump. Which is essentially uh, a refrigerator, a fridge for the oil. Okay. We be we, the heat pump. Yeah. This is more. If we need more, our oh, there is getting expensive. Yeah. Heat pump. A mobile hydraulic like I said, there is often a cooler used simply. Yeah. Often air coolers are sufficient. Yeah. With a lot of ribs and so on, those those heat sinks. Uh, sometimes water cooling system, yeah? heat pump. Uh, these are also corner cases. Yeah? But just to be mentioned, yes, it's possible. Yeah? Build a fridge for your oil. Cooler. Also for also for uh, stationary hydraulic. If you are in an area where it's can, can get really hot, then coolers are done. We have often done coolers in our water power plants. And we use just the water to cool this. So that's about coolers. Next video will be, uh, I will show you a real tank with all those equipment. Okay, so. We will, I will show you a photo of a tank with all those equipments installed and so on, and I will show you how those things are really looking like. And then we're talking about pressure accumulators. So this will be then the next video. So next video, short overview and real world application. Then we're talking about pressure accumulators, what they are good for and so on. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.